Hey guys, it's Danny. Welcome to episode two from our Orchid Hall Watch season one. If you missed episode one, I'll link you to it down below. Practically what we decided to Oh, well, I decided to do. By the way, you might hear that sound in the background. That is a baby jackdaw that we're fostering. Uh, and whenever she hears my voice, she calls for me. So long story for another day. I'm gonna try to be a little bit more silent. So what I decided to do upon your request is to watch an entire orchid haul throughout a year or maybe two and we're gonna go through acclimation, repotting, when they're gonna bloom for the first time, hopefully within the first year or two or so. So I will make a playlist, I will always always share it in the pinned comment down below. So for now we will have two videos in the playlist but along the years hopefully we're gonna have more. I think it's a fun idea. So today it is time to repot some of them and to assess the situation with others. I'm gonna try to give you some answers to some questions that I know you've always wondered about. Before we start, after that long intro, I know, I'm sorry, uh, don't forget to give this video a like if you end up enjoying it and why not subscribe, it is completely free and I post multiple times a week. But if you're feeling extra and you can, do consider further supporting the channel by becoming a member using the affiliate links down below, checking out the merch or using the super thanks option below my videos. Righty. Let's start. I'm gonna start with this one because this is an interesting case. So we have here Catlia Green Emerald Orchid Queen. She is gorgeous. The thing is though, we have buds. It's very easy for me to tell now after a week or two after I purchased it that there are buds forming here. If I would go ahead and repot, particularly because it is in the nursery pot, it is in very compacted kind of sphagnum moss, it's gonna be a slight shock. And especially with cattleyas, there is a real chance of losing the buds. Now, if I think that the orchid and the roots especially are in danger of being suffocated, I will repot and yeah, that's it. I don't care about the buds. But the roots look okay, even though the sphagnum moss looks old, yes, they seem to have grown around the sphagnum moss, not in, because this is a very loose pot. It's one of those very flimsy pots. Now the good thing with these pots, even though you can't reuse them, the good thing is the roots can actually grow in between the potting medium, which usually is compacted, and the pot. They have a lot of space, which is exactly what the orchid did. So I'm not afraid that the roots will get suffocated because the roots are totally outside the sphagnum moss. I have a fly in the room. It's driving me a little bit nuts, but it is what it is. If you see it in the frame, I tried to catch it, I couldn't. <laughs> okay, so this one is not getting repotted today. I want to enjoy the blooms a little bit and it's not the right time to repot this cattleya either because I don't have brand new roots. This growth does not put out roots before it blooms and some cattleyas do do that. With cattleyas you never know when they're gonna grow new roots. Depends on the species or the hybrid so it's not even the right timing. Not that I care much sometimes about it but it's all the more reason to wait a little bit with repotting with this orchid. I might have to close the windows because yeah she keeps hearing me and my little heart melts and I want to sit with her so yeah I'm gonna close the windows. Be right back. So if you ever wondered if it's okay to not repot orchids right after you receive them, yes, it is absolutely fine, but after you assess the situation of your orchid. And wanting to see the blooms, it's a very good reason not to repot right away. But if you see that the medium is really broken down, it smells and you see the roots start to have those burn patches and everything, yeah, just take care of the orchid. It's okay, it's gonna rebloom. If your orchid is in dire need of repot, just repot it. But if it's not, you can totally wait. And with this one, I am going to wait. One orchid that we will repot today because it does not look good is the Cattleya or Sofro Cattleya. This is the former name, Christel Smith and are the beautiful pink cattleya with the yellow lip. So in my previous video, if you remember, I told you that the latest eye was damaged sometime and it's not viable anymore. And I told you also that I think I see some eyes or one eye at least starting to swell 
in the back. And that's exactly what's happening with this orchid. I see two eyes starting to develop. And that's something that many sympodial orchids will do. Each new cane or pseudobulb will generally have multiple eyes where a new growth can form. And they're positioned on either side of the pseudobulb. Most often than not, if one eye on one side is damaged, the other eye on the other side or the other eyes will start to take off. In my case, I think there is a high chance that both eyes were damaged somehow. So in this case, what will happen is that typically the previous growth will start to develop or wake up one of its eyes. But in some cases, you will have multiple eyes being awakened because of this travesty that happened with the new growth. So in this case, I see that two older pseudobulbs started to wake up their eyes, which is fantastic. That's where the rhizome will continue to grow. Most probably this growth will not really sprout anything. I would not cut it because it is absolutely capable of producing new roots. The roots on my orchid are not that good. And also the medium it looks a little broken down. I have a rotten pseudobulb as well. In this case, even if this orchid would have sheets and buds and flowers, I would not wait. With repotting, I would do it now. I'm not entirely sure when new roots will grow. But since the eyes are awake anyway, it is a good time to repot. So let's do that really fast. Alrighty, so I watered these orchids a few days ago, so they're still a little bit moist. No need to soak them again because they're potted Oops, in these very flimsy pots. So here we are. The orchid is potted in medium size to big size bark, which is a very standard potting mix, generally speaking, for cattleyas. We are not going to go for the same type of mix. Oof. Oh, one thing I don't like when I make these videos is that I inhale like the smell of this. This smells very mushroomy and very old. Okay, this one just fell and a good root just fell as well, but it's okay. I have quite a bit of the old pseudobulbs just rotting. They were, I think, buried. That's what happens when you bury growth of orchids into the soil. Now, typically bark is very, very airy. So even if you bury some pseudobulbs, typically nothing bad happens, but it really depends on the environment. So if these orchids were grown in a very humid, and wet environment, even bark can act as a bit of a suffocating agent. So it's a good thing we're intervening. I had a feeling we would find some atrocities in <laughs> this potting medium. And look at that. Alrighty. Well, I'm happy to see that I have some green root tips just starting. So it is the perfect moment to repot this orchid. It's been a couple of weeks or so ever since I purchased or actually received them. So again, even if this orchid looked quite questionable, it wasn't all that far gone for me to act on the spot. Even though it had these pseudobulbs, they're kind of dry. They're not active infections. So again, if you really have to wait for a couple of weeks, it's okay to do so. If you know, or if you determine that your orchid is not really, really in all that much danger. Let's sanitize again my cutting tool. I always do prior to repottings, but then I think, did I really do it? Or did I just dream <laughs> that I sanitize my tools? Yes, you guys, I do dream about orchids. Do you guys <laughs> dream about what you're doing in your growth space? Let me know. Am I the only one? I'm constantly thinking about it. So I like to sanitize them again before I go ahead and use them. So I'm going to cut this rhizome right after the last spent growth. So I'm gonna go, can we see? Maybe like this. I'm gonna go right here at the bottom and try not to cut into this pseudobulb. I might not keep some of these pseudobulbs, but for the time being, I just wanna remove the parts that are done. So I'm gonna go very close to the spent pseudobulb, like right up against it and cut. So, okay, the rhizome looks very good. I don't see any fusarium signs or anything. That is always a good sign. This root is done. It's not good anymore. Mm -hmm. It's completely dry. And here is where I need to decide if I wanna keep all of the growths. As orchids grow, the older, let's say, seedling growths or the tinier growths don't really have much of a purpose because we have a good root system in the front. We have eyes that are developing. So the need for these is not that great. 
they do still store energy and nutrients but the downside for them is that they take up space in the pot so you will have to probably repot sooner rather than later now the bad thing is that i do see another eye starting to swell here so what i will do is just remove this pseudobulb look how tiny it is this is a seedling pseudobulb so oh if i just pull on it it's coming right off look at that and this root it's not good anymore it's just a little tangled here let's try to follow it see where it leads oh there we go see so even the root let me show you is completely dry look and dead so yeah i personally do like to remove as many old pseudobulbs as possible just to make room in the pot but i do see that this pseudobulb still has a good root so i think i'm gonna leave my division like this and yes i will have to repot let's say maybe in a year a year and a half but that's okay let's just clean up a little bit this cut that i made here there we go there was a bit of rhizome left that shouldn't be here okay everything looks okay let me go ahead and remove some more of this bark i'm gonna go to the sink and rinse a little bit the root system that will make the bark fall even better it's gonna detach from the roots and i'm gonna go ahead and cut all the roots that i can see are not alive anymore i'm gonna press on them and if they feel hollow i'm gonna go ahead and remove them like so gonna remove some of these dried sheets they can harbor pests and soon enough i will spray my orchids against pests so yeah i need to remove these sheets be careful with the new growths and we're done i'm just gonna go rinse the root system at the sink come back with a new pot and a new potting medium i'm gonna throw away everything that i have here nothing is kept and i'll be right back all right here we are my root system is rinsed now with all of my new orchids i like to spray the root system with hydrogen peroxide three percent only the root system and like the base of the pseudobulbs this prevents against snails and snails are nothing to joke around with now some of you ask me why i don't use hydrogen peroxide every time i repot well there is no need if i use it once and i get rid of all the snails there's no point in two three years time when i repot the same orchid to use hydrogen peroxide again because there's no pest in the root system okay so the pots that I'm gonna use are one of these. I'm using nursery pots because they're so affordable and they do the job. So I have a few dimensions here. We'll see which one is better suited. Let's see, this one, this one feels a little tiny because this orchid is just about to grow a new root system. So yeah, I think this is the way to go. And I actually just found decorative pots that will fit this size perfectly. So I'm very, very happy. This size is always very problematic because if I use my IKEA decorative pots, you see, they don't fit perfectly. And they do make a little bit of a seal. Not that I mind too much, I live in an oven, but still I would love to have a little bit of ventilation around. So I think this is a perfect pot. I do realize that some will say, oh no, it's too big, but I respectfully disagree. I have my own little system of managing the pot size, which I've perfected along the years, just to make sense with me and my environment. Right, so, sphagnum moss is damp, but it started to dry. I might have to wet it a little bit, but all I'm gonna do is place the orchid with the new growth towards the center of the pot, and the old growth where theoretically nothing will happen as much as possible close to the edge and then i'm gonna arrange sphagnum moss in the pot my typical potting methods that go well in my environment kind of make sure that my sphagnum moss is airy and not compressed could you please sit in the middle that'd be great <laughs> I think that's about it. I also want to add a bamboo skewer just to hold this orchid in place until it starts to root. I'm going to add some bark chips at the top to prevent cyanobacteria from forming. Pretty much all I want to do is shade the moss. And that is it. Let's make sure that these growths see the light. They do. All right. We are good, my friends. 
let's not waste bark. Alrighty, here we go. So let's just also write on the tag when I repotted this orchid. Just for my own reminders and there we have it and this is pretty much how I will go for the rest of the orchids I strictly use sphagnum moss but let's see if I have other interesting orchids from this haul to share with you oh let me show you the decorative pots that I found hold on look they are so pretty and they fit these pots very well now somebody asked Am I still doing the white pots thing? Yeah, as much as possible, but it's just so hard to find only white pots. So I'm going for, I guess, light pots, neutral pots. Here and there, maybe a pale pink, because <laughs> I like it. But yeah, it's hard to go only white. I would love to have only white pots and have the orchids be like the center of the focus. I don't know if that made sense, but it's hard to find only white pots, so. I'm going for neutral pots. Nothing very brightly colored that will take away from the blooms. And there we have it. Righty, so let's see if I can find another interesting orchid to repot. Oh, right, here's an interesting one. This is the only orchid in that hole coming from Secret Garden. Everybody else was from Schroeder. This one, though, if you remember, I was telling you uh, that it doesn't look as healthy, let's say, maybe as the others, certainly not as mature. Well, it is healthy, it is okay, but I think it's clear to see that the new growth will be severely, severely set back. You can see where the sheets end, way below the line of the previous growth. So it will be set back, but the good thing is we are putting out roots and another growth on this side. Look at that. So with this orchid, I would not wait because first of all, this sphagnum moss already has some algae on top. I don't know the quality of it. My personal moss, the one that I love and I have linked, not linked, mentioned in the description is the best quality moss I've ever used. Last me three years. This one, I don't know about it. It's also potted not well in the pot. Many people do the mistake of potting the smallest pseudobulbs towards the center, and that is incorrect. The small pseudobulbs are the oldest ones, not the new ones. The new growth looks like this. It doesn't have a formed pseudobulb, it's just a leafy structure. So because this one was potted incorrect, now all of the new growth is just bumping into the side of the pot. So it's an easy one to repot, ta-da. Oh, it also has old sphagnum moss here. It hasn't been unpotted properly. It's probably been up potted, meaning you pluck it out of its original pot and you just put everything into a pot and just add more medium around it. So you don't get rid of the old medium, which, uh, you know, ooh, look at that. We have a new growth here. Oh, how about that? So this orchid wants to grow right now ASAP. So because we have brand new roots forming, it is the perfect time to repot. If they grow any longer, they will become awkward and we might snap them when we repot. And I want to give this orchid a fresh medium. This growth is very flimsy here. So what I'm going to do is grab it and hold it together with the other ones and then start to remove all of this mess. This sphagnum moss is, uh, it's not as good quality as mine. Maybe it's chili moss. Um, I'm using New Zealand sphagnum moss from Best Grow. Oh, you know what? This is a standalone bulb. Look at that. It's not attached to the orchid. That's why it's growing a new growth. So it's okay. I'll detach it so it's easier to clean. And I will pot it together. That's okay. So this one is done. I'm going to rinse it at the sink as best as possible. A lot of new tiny tips, root tips growing, that's great. This one doesn't look so good. So with this, Sally, I will have to remove most of the roots, if not all of the roots. Maybe that one is still a little good. These ones are not. This one, no, it's not good. At least from here on is not good. Here it might, no, 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 no. It's not good, it's hollow. Okay, so this is all that I could save from this little guy. It's okay. This is the type of orchid, Cattleya type, let's say. It's a different genus, but it's in the same alliance, let's say, in the Cattleya alliance. Um, so this type of orchid produces roots right before the growth fully matures. So unlike the other Cattleya, with this one, we can go ahead and repot 
as the growth matures. We don't need to wait for it to bloom. So that's why I'm saying every Cattleya will be just a little bit different. Some roots just have sections that are not good anymore. So I'm just gonna cut the sections because further up, I have root tips growing. So, and here you see it's, it's not alive anymore. I can see the velamen just slide right off. Everything further up is still alive and we're good. I'm gonna go to the sink, rinse the root system, rinse both of them actually, clean my plate and I'll come back when I'm done. My plate? No, my tray. Alrighty, so again, we're gonna spray the root system with some hydrogen peroxide. <laughs> this root just fell. I think this orchid fits in this pot and I can see the root system is not like very thick, very major. So it can sit in this pot for a while, even if it's a tinier pot. So again, the same type of thing. Gonna add sphagnum moss to the pot, not using slow release fertilizer because now I have the MSU fertilizer. I realize I pronounce it as MSU because this is how I would in Romanian, I guess, kinda, uh, but it's actually MSU. I, I kinda just realized it, <laughs> but yeah. I'm doing the best I can here, but sometimes. Sometimes things just don't make sense. Right, so kind of also stick this little back bulb here. There we go. Hmm. I'm gonna put another bamboo skewer. Why not? We have a lot of them and they're very useful. And this one actually has a bit of a flower spike here. So it is mature, it's just a back. So I'm just gonna pin the flower spike to the stake. There we go. Then we're gonna add the bark. And we are done with this one as well. Now this pot that I found actually fits very well in these IKEA decorative pots. They brought pink ones as well and I thought they were very cute. So I said, eh, pink, white, same thing. <laughs> So yeah, I got some pink ones too. I don't know. Don't know if it goes with this one, but it has white flowers. So I think it's gonna look nice. And there we have it. This one is ready as well. Maybe we have time for another one before I let you go. Everybody else seems to be conventional, nothing all that spectacular that maybe we can talk about, but maybe I'm wrong. Let me double check and maybe we can do one more. All right, there is one more I would like to do. This one's a doozy. Hopefully it's not gonna take us all day, but it's this type. This is an orchid potted in a literal coconut husk and then in a net pot. And as you might expect, yes, it's gonna be quite hassling to remove all of these roots from the net pot, from the coconut husk. Maybe we're gonna be lucky. The thing is though, I cannot really keep this orchid like this for way too long. You can see it's already shriveled even though it was actually sitting in water. These types of mounts, let's call them like that, I feel like they're better suited for nursery conditions where you either have automatic um, sprinkler system or you can just water them with a hose. And in my system that is based on wicking, it doesn't really go. So the orchid is seriously getting dehydrated. Oh, it's already cracked the pot here. And as expected, it's not gonna come out without a fight. This is, oh, it's a good one. Rung, Rung Nafa, fancy warm welcome. Sorry if I butchered that name. So what I'm gonna do, I was thinking that maybe I can remove this pot by myself because it's, the orchid is stuck in here. Um, and I'm not gonna reuse this pot, but I think I need my shears to do this. This is a dead root. We're full of roots that we need to remove, but we also have a lot of good roots. I need to be very careful because bits of plastic might start to fly around. I should wear some goggles. Maybe I will. I'm just gonna close my eyes every time I do this because I'm a little lazy to go get the goggles. I'm literally just looking away. <laughs> okay, let's see. More or can we get her out? I think we can get her out. There are a lot of roots at the bottom, but they're not alive anymore. I really don't like the potting style, but hey. These roots, even if they're not alive anymore, they're very strong. All right, here we are. It's not over yet. I'm gonna start to remove bits and pieces. Oh, this was a good root that I didn't see. I'm gonna start to remove bits and pieces. One thing is given. 
I will destroy some of these roots. It's impossible not to do so, but I do have some growing tips. I do have new growth on the way. Uh, I have to, I can't leave this orchid like this. This one will be set back for sure. I can feel it, but I cannot leave the orchid like this. I always, always dislike when I have orchids potted like this. I need to remove bit by bit. And of course, there are roots inside that will not make it. It's impossible for them to make it because I need to remove literal pieces of wood, coconut husk, and I will remove with them some roots as well. It is what it is. I dislike this potting style a lot, like a lot, a lot, but it is what it is. How do you save the roots from this situation? You tell me how. I'll continue to do this off camera and come back with whatever's left of the root system. <laughs> Look at this. It is full of coconut in there. All right, we're back. So yeah, this is what I have left. I'm gonna remove some of the roots that don't look so good. We will most certainly have to go back with this orchid and see what orchids survive the repotting because this has been brutal. Look what I have here. I, there's no way to save any root system from this. Also, if you ever receive one of these orchids, be very, very careful. Look what I found like in the middle of the root ball as I was rinsing the roots. It is a metal um, hook thing and it's very, very sharp and it's very, very old. <laughs> so it's a miracle I did not get stung and like scratched and stuff. I don't know how I managed to avoid it, but somehow I did. Horrible, dreadful, dreadful, horrible, horrifying, horrifying. I hate it so much, this potting style, but anyway. Now, there are a few things you can do if you want to avoid as much as possible root damage. One thing is to just let the orchid grow in this setup. Mind you though, it will eventually need repotting or changing because this is organic, it will break down. This was close to breaking down, it's been here for a while. So you will have to remove it somehow or you can let the orchid just start to grow and pretty much grow into a different pot. That could work, although good luck, because some orchids just don't have long rhizomes and this one doesn't. Furthermore, if you have two growths on two opposite directions, you know, good luck again, <laughs> because it's gonna take a little bit of MacGyvering to put two pots next to it. You know, it's a whole ordeal. You could do that and just wait it out. Or you can rip the band-aid like I did. I'm that type of a person, just rip it off, <laughs> generally speaking. Um, so that's what I did. I'm happy I have new growth because hopefully we're gonna get new roots soon. But I do want to cut away some of the roots that don't look so good and then we're gonna be back with potting up. And I think these are the, let's say, most interesting cases. Everybody else is a pretty typical type of a repotting and I would go about it in the same manner in which I did the previous two orchids. This is the only one which is just not, not okay. Uh, the other ones are pretty typical repots. I had to, I had to, the development was completely done. This root wouldn't have survived. Oh brother, okay. So I have a lot of these roots which are just damaged. They're just not gonna make it. So there's no point in keeping them because I know they won't survive. And as I was saying, in about a month or so, I will unpot the orchid and cut away whatever root did not make it because I will have some that are a little questionable now, but I'm gonna let them be, who knows, maybe they decide to pull through. And if they don't, yeah, I'm just gonna have to remove them. I also left on some pieces of this coconut husk because there's no way to remove it and it is a good root and I don't wanna damage it want to preserve as many roots as I can because what we have here is a crime scene. Um, yeah. Alrighty, so the orchid is potted. It's the only one that I have in this setup, in this haul, so yay! I don't have to go through this ordeal. I honestly prefer to repot orchids that come in packed, suffocating sphagnum moss. It's literally easier to remove or it's just as annoying, but at least I do not destroy the roots. Moss is gentle on the roots. Typically it comes right off if you are patient. 
This it's impossible to get off because it's literal wood attached to the roots on a large surface. It, it's impossible. So as I was saying, I'm expecting setback, but hopefully not that much. Righty, so that said, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed today's video and you learned something new. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos and updates and always check the pinned comment for the playlist with Work It Hole Season 1. Righty, so that said, I'll see you all next time. Bye!